This is Covenant Radio and this is the special edition because it is the pre Wolfbeck 2024 series where we are going to be involved and engaged in keeping you updated with the build-up and, of course, the event countdown. Um, the World Faith Believers Convention will be coming up on 2nd to 7th of January 2024 and we are heavily counting down. Remember that you can follow us on all socials at Wolfbeck. Get involved with the conversations. would love to hear from you. With us in the studios is a man who I greatly and deeply respect, love, and admire. He is the convener of Wolfbeck, the World Faith Believers Convention, and of course, the senior pastor of the Covenant Nation. Join me and welcome Pastor Boju Oyemade. Hey, welcome, Pastor. Uh, thank you for having me on your program. Thank you, sir. Thank you for making our time for this. Um, let's get straight to it, sir. And I like your studio. All thank right, then. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Yeah. Let, let's talk about the story, the journey of Wafbeck mm -hmm. inception, and what's the inspiration behind the transition to Wafbeck, and how is that supposed to impact um, the, the the people who come for the conference? All right. So let me um, try to make it concise. The background or the root of um, the conference that we called Wafbeck that went to Wafbeck. Mm -hmm was that when I was in school, we used to hold, when I was doing a campus fellowship, a convention, we used to call it the Bible Believers Convention. I think it was BBC. So what happened was, and it was, became a very big convention, right? We run for 12 days, it was really huge. Wow. All right. And I mean, we would invite people like Bishop Idaosa, Bishop Oedipo, I mean, everybody was coming to the meeting. It was a, it was a standard convention that even a church would hold. So what happened was that when I started church and mm -hmm. after some time, God told me, said, look, uh, one of the mistakes you're making is that you are despising your sling and stone and looking for the arm of Saul. Mm -hmm. That there were things you did when you were on campus that worked. Those things were seedlings, they planted and transplant those things into your ministry. So I took one of the conferences we used to do then and called it Platform. And then I took the second one we used to do, and I called it the West Africa. So I was in discussion with somebody who was the dean of Rema Bible College then about the vision. I said, look, why don't you just call it the West Africa Faith Believers Convention? So we called it that. So at the inception, what the vision was at the beginning was that I believe that we needed to have a rekindling of the revelation knowledge that brought about the charismatic move of the spirit in this country, which started around about, say, 79, 80, 81. And that foundation should be laid for the incoming generation. Mm. So what we decided to do was to go back to Tulsa and get graduates of Rema Bible College and then look for Nigerians who also um, build their ministries from that foundation and bring them together to hold a conference. So that's how we started it. Mm. All right, but then it has now evolved, but um, the, even though it's evolving, I make sure that mm. um, in the conference, the backbone of the conference are still Word of Faith teachers. All right. I mean, like you mentioned, it has evolved over the years, yeah. and this is a huge event. Yeah. It, it really just tells me personally um, the, the kind of skills you have when it comes to planning planning huge events. Yeah. So so what lessons have you learned over time, all right, while planning this event and how has it um, influenced the growth and impact of the conference? Sir? That's a very good question. And I want to answer it intentionally. Right. Um, two things I, first of all, you have to have a clear vision of the objective that you want the meeting for the conference. Now, and then you can be emotional. Hmm. If you're gonna sustain the grace on something like that, you can't be emotional when it comes to decision making, particularly when it comes to selection of ministers. All right, you may like some people, but they may not fit into the vision for that meeting, right? All right, hmm. so you have to have the emotional capacity to be able to, and wisdom to be able to manage relationships in your life. The second thing also is that in holding conferences like this, there are people with different tendencies and 
characters. And um, you have to have a large heart to accommodate the different tendencies. And um, how am I going to put it in a way that is correct? And um, to support the gifts of people because you believe that that gift will be a blessing to the body of Christ mm. and stick with that and don't uh, don't get personal about anything that happens. All right. All right. For, so let's talk about first timers. There are yeah. people who are experience, they didn't experience WAFEC, but I mean, it's the same conference. I mean, this is their first experience after 10 years of, mm-hmm. you know, WAFEC 2024. Um, what's your advice on how they can maximize the conference and pull as much as possible. All right. And, and I mean, it's general for all conferences, yes. for, for attending a conference, you could even apply to anything that you're doing. Um, the first thing is you've got to understand is the law of the anointing. The law of the anointing mm-hmm. is that the anointing will only work to where it is sent. So Jesus said, look, Elijah was anointed, but he was only sent. Now, so why was he sent only to just one person? So all of us can attend the conference, but that anointing can be sent to a few people within the conference. And Moses received the call, but he was only sent to the nation of Israel when they offered up prayers to God. So God came down and said, I've heard the groanings and the cries of these people. Therefore, I am sending you. So you have to offer up your own personal prayers to God concerning the meeting based on your own personal expectations and table those things before God. And when you do that, then God, in response to that, all right, channels the anointings and the graces that are coming into the meeting in your own particular direction. So there has to be a pull. It's almost like there are many people that were clinging on Jesus. But Jesus said, somebody has touched me Mm -hmm. because virtue and power. So you have to go intentionally to the meeting there, knowing that we may be many, but the touch is always an individual thing. And so you come there and release your faith. Like the woman with the issue of blood said, before she came into the congregation, so to speak, she kept saying, if I will just touch the helm of his garment, I shall be made whole. So you also have to build a confession prior to that meeting as to what will happen when you enter into the meeting. Into the meeting. All right. Um, the lineup of speakers are usually... Um, I know you mentioned something about it. But yeah. They're usually very solid and just, just mind-blowing. Uh, Is there a particular selection process you, you, you deploy to, to, to bring or well, to know who fits? Yeah. Well, right. basically, um, there has to be the backbone of the meeting, which is the teaching of God's word. That's right. the backbone of the yes. meeting. All right, and then you want to build other graces around that particular thing. Um, also, you want to look at the meeting and see how you can pay anointings. In other words, Jesus sent them two by two. So the anointing is amplified when it's paired. So you have to look for ministries you can pair. So for example, I'm just giving this. I saw me insight now. I've seen Pastor John Hannah minister with Prophet Gideon Danzo and the harmony between both of them mm. and the synergy was phenomenal. And I saw it, um, the video of it in it. So I've always looked forward to having those two and pairing those anointings together. So you you have an understanding of it, the pairing right. of the anointings, right. the backbone, and then what you want to right. accomplish. Uh, so it's almost like, it will almost be like building a team for a football match. Right. Okay. So strategic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In your opinion, I mean, we've been impacted. This 11th year going, the body of Christ individuals have been heavily impacted, you know, by Wafbeck churches too. Are there specific testimonies, you know, one or two that resonate with you, you know, that you can mention? Well, you about? always, you always have to, I mean, respect the fact that it was a couple some years back. Uh, the, the child was born with a hole in the heart. You know, and I believe, I'm not just believe, I know it was Pastor Matthew Ashmolo ministry and he called it. And this, I, I, they didn't even tell me. It was in one of the major blogs in Nigeria that I saw that they wrote the testimony. And this was a secular wow. major blog that I read it. And I said, what's going on here? And, and the person said, well, my church held this and this. And then they explained that that was massive. Okay. 
Um, also, I mean, to select now, um, I mean, I've had somebody, okay, this, this also really got to me. Uh, there was somebody who, in church who used to serve in a certain capacity and, well, he said he was going to start his ministry and prayed for him and he went. So a year after he invited me to come and speak there and was out of Lagos. I mean, he was in Enugu. And when I got there, I saw the tent. I saw everything and I said to him, so when did all this start? He said he was doing the camera at Wafbeck and he, while he was on campus, he was president of a fellowship and the thing just hit him. Go back to the work where you are and go and 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 that was another thing. Because I got there one year, there was two, hundreds of people in the place. And he said it was Wabek. The first Wabek would be that the call came back to him. And he just said he's going to go back. So, I mean, there are many, but those two sure. come to my mind now. Phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, um, looking ahead, uh, envisioning and as the... As the um, the lead and the visionary of, of Wolfpack. Well, future growth, impact of Wolfpack, is there something, new initiative that you're working on for expansion? Of course, there are new initiatives I'm working on. But we only say them when the Holy Spirit releases us to say them, but there are new initiatives I'm working on. All right. Uh, there, are new, all right. There, are, there are definitely new initiatives. There are, there are um, signs we're beginning to see mm. on the, for example, I mean, I just came out of a meeting now. Yeah because one of staff was telling me about the request that people for letters to get their visas to come into Nigeria. And it started getting overwhelming and we couldn't, con we couldn't just be writing letters. Because so oh, they sure. definitely, all right. I mean, people are talking about groups. Somebody called me now, they a group of 40 people are coming from this country, group of 50. So obviously that tells you that um, the waters are, strong at getting out of the country. I mean, I have a friend who hasn't maybe been to Nigeria maybe once in 30 years. She's coming in for just for the conference. I mean, I was shocked. I said, I'm coming, I'm coming from. So we're beginning to see that they, there's, a, there's a pool. So that begins to make us think, all right, in certain directions okay. concerned. Pastor Bodju, thank you so much for making our time to be with us. Uh, we appreciate your time. We know you have a busy schedule. And that's it with the, 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 the convener and the senior pastor of the Covenant Nation speaking to us concerning pre Wafbeck um, um, preparations. Do well to follow us on all socials at Wafbeck, all right, and engage in all conversations. God bless you. Make plans to attend the meeting. It's on January 2nd to 7th, 2024. We're going to be streaming all the sessions of Wafbeck 2024 which again starts from January 2nd to 7th on mixlr.com forward slash covenant on insightsforliving.org forward slash radio, covenant radio. We are also going to stream from the Wolfbeck YouTube channel. Join us, pray, plan, and prepare to be at the event. God bless you as you come.